Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, today I have a very neutral kind of eye look for you. I've used a new foundation. Well, it's not new to me, but it's, I've picked it up again. I used to use it a couple of years ago and I've picked it up again because I remembered how much I did love this foundation. Um, now it is a little bit more expensive. You get a little bit less product in the tube. Um, but it is a cream. It's easy to use, easy to travel with. And the eyes, I've used the Zoeva Rose Golden Palette, uh, which is absolutely stunning. So if you'd like to see me use these products on my face and what I think about them, just stick around. Okay, so I'll just get rid of my hair a little bit. So I've already moisturized, put my eye cream on and put some pencil on my eyebrows. So I put the pencil on first before I do my cream so that it will go on <laughs> and then at the end I'll actually go back in and put some brow powder on and clean up the eyebrows. Um, so first up I'm using my Tarte Clean Slate as usual for my pores. So just pushing that product into the pores and my wrinkles. So I'm also going in around the perimeter with my Giorgio Armani Light Master Primer just to pop a little bit of glow in there. Um, I am dry around the perimeter of my face so this isn't going to do anything in terms of producing oil but just a little bit more hydration and a little bit of glow around the perimeter. So I'm using today my Makeup Forever HD Foundation in the stick. Um, and I'm in the color Y325. I used to use this a fair while ago and I loved it and I've kind of rediscovered it again. Um, now for mature skin, <clears throat> it is good. It doesn't sink into the lines of my face. Um, so I'm glad I rediscovered it because I actually do like it a lot. So I'm using my Real, Real Techniques buffing brush to buff that in. And this colour is good for me in uh, winter. It's winter at the moment. Now you do need a little bit of hydration underneath this because it is a cream, so it is thicker. Um, so it is a little bit harder to actually manipulate and buff in. Um, so as much moisture as you can have underneath this foundation, the better. So next up I'm going in with some bronzer. I'm using my Giorgio Armani Maestro Liquid Summer in 90. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on my MAC brush. And just bronze up in the usual areas. Now I'm just placing it at this stage with this brush and buffing it in and then I'll go back and blend. So just going back in with my Sigma F50 and just blending that.
So you will have noticed that I didn't go right up underneath my eyes with my foundation. I just find too many products underneath my eyes just adds to the wrinkles and they all, the product just settles in the wrinkles. So I go in now with my Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector and this is a Morphe E20 brush which is great for actually placing the product down and getting up in that inner corner area where you need the brightness the most. Where I do So going in with just a little bit of product each time, I'm not swirling my brush in or anything like that, I'm just tapping the brush in. So you can see that immediately highlights or brightens up underneath your eyes. Now we'll blend that in in a sec. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to go in also with my MAC Prep and Prime in Radiant Rose. Uh, so this is a light pink, which is good for my complexion. So just a little. I don't go overboard with this. Now I do highlight some areas of my face as well. Now I'm blending that in with my Zoeva 2, 2, no it's not, it's a 110 face shape brush. And trying to keep the product in the place where I actually put it. Now it's basically just tapping this into my skin. So I'll blend it a little bit better in a sec with a beauty blender. Now if this does start to settle into the fine lines and wrinkles, I always go back with a beauty blender that's dampened with some setting spray later on. I like to do my foundation first unless I'm doing a, an eye look which is going to have a lot of fallout um, because I like to go back in and blend as I go. When I can see things settling into the fine lines I can go back and blend a little bit more. Just means I've popped a little bit too much product in there so the less product the better obviously for wrinkles and fine lines. I'll just go and blend that with my bigger foundation brush which is from Delium Tools and just dip all over that edge. Now I'm just colour correcting a little uh, capillary there that just showed up one day with my Pixie Undercover Crayon I think it's called in perk up peach and then I'll go in with a concealer brush and just blend the very edges of that product. Now if you find you put a little bit too much highlighter on your nose just go back in with your foundation brush and just go down the edges so that highlight is basically just down the center of the nose and you can also go in with your beauty blender just pop a little bit of fix plus or setting spray on it I don't like it damp as such or wet and just blend over your nose. Now this is when I go back in as I'm doing the rest of my makeup. I keep this handy so I can go back in and take off that excess product that's underneath my eyes and settling into the lines. Obviously you don't want to take it all off. Now that Makeup Forever foundation is good. It's not really settled into those lines at all. Let's go over them with the fat end of the Beauty Blender just to make sure but that's good. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of Agave of Bite Beauty's Agave Lip Mask on so my lips are so dry. This is a coloured version but they do have a clear or no colour version as well. Okay, so I'll go in and do the eyes next and I'll leave my blush and my highlighter till last. Um, <clears throat> so today I'm using the Zoeva Rose Golden Palette. I think I've used this before on my channel. It's absolutely beautiful. I love this to death. Um, it's got a multitude of copper colours in it and it's got some uh, a dark brown. So that is a sort of a really dark purpley colour. But most of these are actually gold and rose golden colours. And this is a great colour for actually setting your eye or popping in the transition area. Luster, I use that a lot so it's just a very light neutral beige colour. 
first up though I need to prime my eyes I'm still waiting for my P. Louise eye base which is taking forever to come from the UK so until then I'll use my favorite which is the Urban Decay uh, eyeshadow primer potion in Eden and on a Zoeva concealer buffer brush just buffing that all in okay so I'll just go in and set my eyes so I'm going to use that uh, color which is called luster it's not a sheen so um, I don't know where the word luster or the name luster came from but it's just like I said a very matte beige color so I'll just pop that all over to set so this is what I mean about just keeping a beauty blender or your brush handy so that you can just go over those areas as you put your makeup on that are settling into the lines it's not so much down here it's more just here with those horrid wrinkles that I have in the middle of my forehead okay so a little bit I'm going in with a shimmer color now this is a really easy eye look so just basically three colors and maybe something on in the inner corner um, so I'll just pop some prep and prime on a shadow brush this is a uh, Too Faced all over shadow and I'm just going in with shining bright which is almost a mauvey sort of <clears throat> It's not shimmer, but it's got a satin finish to it. So I'll pop a little bit of that just on the outer half of my eyelid. Okay, so I'll go in with a clean <coughs> shadow brush and a little bit more Fix Plus on that. And then I'm going in with Rusty Petals, which is the color next to it, which is a very similar color, but just a little bit lighter, bronze color. And I'll just put that on the inner half of my eye and just blend down the middle there. So just in the inner corner, I'm just going to pop a little bit of this color, which is Foil, which is an even lighter beige color just on a very small pencil brush just on the inner corner tempted to bring that up a little bit just on the outer edge of that color there it looks quite pretty now I'll just go in with that original blending brush that I placed the setting color down and just go over the very very edges of that darker color to blend a little So bottom lash line, I'm going in with a dark color, which is called Wonderful. So it's a darker brown, dark brown. <laughs> now just a little bit, I don't want to go overboard with this, but just on a smudge brush, just on the very tip. So I'll just go on the outer, outer corner of my eye there. Now I'll just go back into Luster, which was that original color that we actually placed down to set everything. I'm just going to go on the outside edge of that just to blend that dark color in I'm just going to go in with that foil and just bring that along a little bit more along the bottom lash line there so I'm just going to go into the waterline with Marc Jacobs matte gel eyeliner in brown out now these brown colors Obviously I like to use black, but brown is just a little bit more subtle. Okay, so for blush, I'm using my Chantecaille Liquid Lumiere in Lustre. That's in a tube. Just a tiny little bit on your finger and just place where you want it. And basically you can just blend this with your finger. You can use a stippling brush. I'm just going to use my fingers today. Now I'm popping that on the apples and then just blending up on top of my foundation on top of the um, bronzer there 
just popping a little bit more on. I'm feeling the blush today. Yeah, I'm just going to tight line as well with that brown out. I really do hate doing this. It tickles your eye so much, but it does actually add to the thickness of your lashes or the look <coughs> or the illusion of thickness of lashes. So I'm just going in with a little bit of highlighter now. Now this is not highlighter as such, this is RMS Living Luminizer. Um, it just gives you a little bit of a glow, so there's no real colour to it as such. Um, so I'm not going for a really colourful look today, I'm just doing neutral. So just a little bit on your hand and then tap into it with your finger. And then just place, I know that looks white when you put it on. When you actually blend that in it'll just give you glow. So just a tiny bit, stay away from your wrinkles and your pores. So ordinarily I would just place it just here. You can blend down a little bit into your blush at the top of the blush there. And if you don't have any pores sort of in this area you can bring it forward a little. Um, if you have no wrinkles or pores there it is nice to see just a little bit of highlight from the front of your face. there you go it just gives you that little bit of glow so just a touch on my nose always like to do my nose and don't go in too much with your fingers back and forth with this or it will take your makeup off so just tap whoa a little bit too much there and then I always still like to put a little bit above my brows here like that but when my wrinkles get worse up here, I won't be able to do that. And just make sure it's really well blended, basically. Okay, so time to perfect the eyebrows a little. So I'm going in now with Anastasia's Brow Powder Duo in Blonde. Um, and just on an angled brush, this is a MAC angled brush. So basically just tap in in <clears throat> both sides of the colour. I mean the colour on one side is not too much different to the other. Ordinarily I would go in with a lighter colour towards the inner of the brow and then the darker colour towards the tail. But as you can see by that, I mean there's really not too much difference in the colours. So I'll just go in just in the centre first up because you, you don't want to place too much product at the front of your brow there. Now I find just going over pencil with a powder just softens your brows. And this does stay quite well. So basically you're setting the pencil. Give yourself a little bit of a tail there. It doesn't have to be perfect so I will tidy this up in a sec. Now with brows I find as you're getting older I like to keep them obviously as high as we can get them. Um, so I do do an arch but it is more of a curved arch and I don't bring that tail down too far. I try to put it, I try to place it more outwards in that kind of a fashion. Obviously we don't want droopy eyes so anything that's going to come down around your eyes is just going to make it look more droopy. So just go in a little bit by bit and just with the ex the product that's left on the brush I'll just go through the front of the brow there. So I've got a little bit of a gap happening just here so I'll just go in with a little bit more product and just here. And then don't forget to brush them through with a spoolie. And just gently. If you do want to pop a little bit of gel on, I'm using the, I do use every now and again the Too Faced Brow Quickie. I'm pretty sure this is in blonde as well. Just to just take that excess product off. Just at the front of my brows just to make them look a little bit more realistic and bring out the hairs in your eyes, eyebrows. So just at the very front. I think they're pretty even. 
that's the hardest part basically is getting them even. And I'll go in with the uh, cotton bud just to get that angle a little bit better. And then I always go in with <clears throat> a brow product. Um, I usually use either my Too Faced Instant Brow Lift or this is a Rimmel Brow This Way, which is a light pink color, matte. So just on an angle brush and just on the outer edge or the outer third of your eyebrow. And that just helps. I think I need a new brush. <clears throat> just helps to sharpen up that edge there and just pull that product down a little so it gives you a little brow highlight. I don't go in with shimmer anymore on my brow. It just doesn't look good on mature eyes for me. So just basically, like I said, the outer third there and just sharpen up that edge and then just blend it downwards. So no lashes today, um, but I am going in with my Lancome Sills Booster which builds up volume in your lashes. Now it goes on white and then dries clear, but it basically just thickens up your lashes. So if you're not going to be putting lash, false lashes on, this is a great alternative. Obviously you can just go in straight away with just mascara if you've got beautiful lashes or if you don't care. Um, but I'm just going to pop a bit of this on today. Now let this dry before you actually go in with your mascara. So while that's drying, I'm just going to go in and take that lip balm off, just blot it to get the excess product off. And then I'm just going in with a matte lip pencil. This is in Naked. Now it doesn't show up much at all, but I do like to put it underneath my lipstick. It just helps my lipstick to stay on. Now I forgot my highlight around my nose, so I'm going in with my Pixie Stick in Wide Awake. Just like a little bit more lightness in that area which is typically dark and just blend that in with your beauty blender okay lipstick I'm using my dose of colors in sand very light neutral brown whoops too much. And don't forget to finger test it. You definitely don't want lipstick on your teeth. I hate it. Okay, MAC Giga Black Lash, Extended Play Giga Black Lash over the top. You can see that there's a little bit of white still left on one eyelash, but the rest of it is clear. And we'll go straight over the top with mascara. A little bit of gloss, I'm using Tom Ford's Lip Lacquer, which is a clear gloss. Okay, so I do like the Makeup Forever Foundation Stick. Like I said, I hadn't used it for a while. Um, it does give you a really nice look to your face. It is harder to actually blend in because it is a cream. Um, you've just got to work at it a little bit, but I do like it. So don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did like this video, share and comment, um, subscribe as well and click the notifications bell so that when I do upload more content you're notified and you don't miss any of my videos. Uh, keep being the best version of you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.